to order. Welcome to the April 6th meeting of the City of Raleigh Appearance Commission. My name is Adam Walters and I am the chair of the commission. The Raleigh Appearance Commission is a public body appointed by the City Council that exercises both advisory and quasi-judicial functions. The Appearance Commission's responsibilities relate to zoning and other land use matters as well as the visual quality and aesthetic characteristics of the city. Today's agenda includes requests for design alternates from the city's unified development ordinance. When hearing requests for design alternates, the Appearance Commission sits as a quasi-judicial body and conducts an evidentiary hearing on the request. That means it's like a court hearing. State law sets specific procedures and rules concerning how this commission must make its decisions. The commission's decisions are constrained by the standards in the city's ordinance and the facts presented at the hearing. The commission hears and considers evidence presented at the hearing and applies the standards set forth in state law and the city's ordinance. The commission must base its decisions upon competent material and substantial evidence presented at the hearing. If you will be speaking as a witness, please focus on the facts and standards and not personal preference or opinion. This meeting is open to the public and everyone is welcome to watch. However, participation in the evidentiary hearing is limited. Parties have rights to participate fully. Parties may have present, uh, may present evidence, call witnesses and make legal arguments. Witnesses may testify as to facts to which they are competent to, to testify, so long as those facts relate to the legal standards. In addition, lay or non-expert witness testimony is limited to facts, not opinions. For certain topics, the commission needs to hear opinion testimony from expert witnesses. These topics include projections about impacts on property values and projections about the impacts on tra traffic safety. Uh, before we begin the hearings, I would like to remind applicants to keep your presentations brief, considering some time constraints for our commissioners pre uh, present this evening. We will now conduct the evidentiary hearings on today's agenda. Um, we will now open the evidentiary hearing item DA 25 2021. I'll have uh, Casey Evans come up and introduce the hearing. Casey, before you start, I'll swear you into the meeting. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So the subject property for this case is 4411 New Bern Avenue, and it's located on the north side of New Bern Avenue near the intersection with New Hope Road. The property is owned commercial mixed use, three stories with the parking limited frontage. The applicant is proposing a general building for a Chick-fil-A fast food restaurant with a drive-through. The applicant is requesting a design alternate to reduce the ground story transparency along the south side of the building, which faces New Bern Avenue. Transparency is required for each side of the building facing a public street, and in this case, a minimum of 33% transparency is required on the ground story. 50% of that required transparency, um, it must be located between three and eight feet. And here are the two findings that must be satisfied in order to grant a design alternate for transparency. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Casey. The applicant can come up, um, present evidence and legal arguments in support of the request. As a reminder, any evidence and argument must focus on the applicable standards. Before you begin, um, state for the record your name, address, and relation to the case. Sure. I'm Tom Johnson. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Williams Mullen at 301 Fayetteville Street, Suite 1700 here in Raleigh, here on behalf of Chick-fil-A. Okay. Uh, and we're presenting, as, as Casey mentioned, a design alternate on the, uh, to the transparency requirement on the Chick-fil-A as it faces New Bern Avenue. And I'd like to have Steve Malloy, who's the architect on the project, to come up and explain. This is very similar to requests that came before this board not too long ago for a, a, a Chick-fil-A on Six Forks Road. Very, very similar design. You know, that was approved at that time. So, um, but anyway, I'll have Steve come up and talk about that as a witness and then 
and I'll come back and summarize. Okay. Sounds right. good. Thank you. Steve, will you state your name and address in relation to the case for the record? Yes, so I'm Steve Malloy. Um, I'm with Edwards and Hotchkiss Architects, uh, and we're Chick-fil-A is our client. Our address is uh, 7, 750 Old Hickory Boulevard, Brentwood, Tennessee. Okay. And do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is similar. We've, we've been before the board before with very similar, uh, I guess, background or reasonings. So in this particular case, the way a Chick-fil-A, if we, am I able to switch through these slides at all to, yeah. how do I do that? Casey can help you. Sorry. Just, Just back and yeah. forth. Yep. Okay. So I guess I'll start with the site plan if I can find that. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So with a lot of the, the Chick-fil-A projects, we want the front door to be customer friendly and kind of face in towards the parking lot so we don't have customers walking across the drive through And that lets us often have the drive through lane be on the outside of the site. And we feel like that functions really well and it's a lot safer for customers. The, the downside, what we're going to look at on this project though, is that it puts the kitchen kind of up against the main street of the building. So if you have where the front entry doors are facing the parking lot, the kitchen is pushed towards the back. And so that leads us into uh, when we have these transparency requirements, Chick-fil-A's often run into, I'm gonna use the word trouble, maybe that's not the right word, but in, into issues where we, it's hard for us to get the amount of windows, like real windows into those restaurants. Now. I will say, I'll flip over to the elevation again. We, Chick-fil-A years ago decided they wanted light in those restaurants. Sorry, let me see if I can find that elevation. Okay, so the top, ele the color elevation. So what we're proposing, the gray is a spandrel glass, but the, the whiter window that we have at the very top there, those are actual clear you know, real transparent windows. Um, we don't have any equipment in the way in that area. And so Chick-fil-A years ago decided there's a, 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 it's better for the employees to have some natural light in there. So that's something they've wanted to do on their own. So if we could put more windows in here, we would be all for it because we feel like it would be a better building. It's going to help employees. Everything's going to function better. Um, but, but we've run into this as an issue. Uh, and spandrel glass we were talking earlier before this meeting, uh, like I've been around, I've been working on Chick-fil-A's for a while. So 15 years ago, um, when we'd have a requirement like this, we didn't have the spandrel glasses being like a solution. It, it wasn't like on our radar. And we'd often try to, you know, do brick work or something else because we couldn't always have windows. Um, and so Chick-fil-A has worked really hard on, for 10 or 15 years, I've seen them do this, of like what is a really good solution for a situation just like this. We like the idea too of having as many windows as possible and that's where the spandrel glass comes into play. Uh, and I have seen them play with different colors and the color that we're proposing here is what we like the best because it really does do, as you're driving by in particular, uh, it is a solid like opaque Gla you know, it's glass, but then you have a painted opaque back to it. Uh, but the, it's the, the reflection and the color makes a difference on that, right? So that is something that they have over years really worked on and tweaked. And so we feel like that we're proposing here really does a good job of reflecting it. And I do have an example here in this photo. Uh, this is a different store. This one's actually, I think, in Charlotte. But the point is, if you look at the if you look at the photo part, it's very difficult to tell what is clear actual window and what is the spandrel. And that's what we have been trying to go for is to try to find a really good spandrel glass that is difficult to tell the difference. And so we did this over at the Six Forks project. Um, we've been very happy with it. We feel it's the best thing that we can do. It, and it falls right in line with the intent, which is to try to have actual windows on that backside. So what we're proposing here is like, we really can't get windows back there because it is the kitchen. Um, we need it for the kitchen to function properly. We need that wall space. You don't want to be looking in the, into the kitchen. There, there is, I will mention this kind of a side, but there's a, a grade differentiation for this new burn site. So we're down a little bit and there's a lot of landscaping there. So in some respects, what we're talking about, people who are driving by are not gonna see this elevation. It's very difficult to see. And I think we might have here. 
here we go. So there's enough vegetation. There's the existing Ruby Tuesdays, and you really can't see it. So that's kind of a side topic, I guess, but it, it, is, it is hidden well. But the intent is to have the transparency, and we feel like that the spander glass is the best material uh, to, to meet that requirement. And I'm just going to say, like, Chick-fil-A would agree with the, the intention. You know, we want the same exact thing. This, it would look great to have windows back there. So we've got actual, real, clear story windows where we can. Where we can't do it, we've been, we're proposing the spandrel glass. Anything else? I don't think so. I'm any, here to answer questions any at that point. Yeah. Do you have any information on the uh, transparency on the other sides of the buildings? Um, How you're meeting that or exceeding it? Well, we, it doesn't have the same requirements. It was only the New Bern Avenue that oh, had, had the 33 and all. So, but we do have, this is a consistent look. If I go back to like, this is the other elevation, the other three elevations that we've got there. So we, we again, we put windows where we can in those in the dining areas. The middle elevation there you can see is like the drive through where you're going to pull up to get your, your food. The other side does have windows too. Um, but it is that top elevation. That's the only one that has the, re the transparency requirements. Okay. If you were to calculate the transparency on the, um, on the spandrel glass, do you know what that ends up Oh, being? okay. Yes, thank you. Th so that we have put enough spandrel glass on here to meet those requirements. So both in that we have to have the 33% and in that two foot to eight foot range has to be 50 percent so yes we are yeah thank you that's important Do you know what those numbers are uh they're on here so the middle so the middle elevation uh, of these two elevations the middle one is talking about let me refresh my memory i think th yeah, okay the middle one is showing do we meet the 33 percent for the so you this the cross hatch that we've got the way the code or the ordinance reads, you take from zero to 12 feet, and then it's got to be, that's the area, and then you have to have 33% of that needs to be the, the transparency. So that's what that middle one is showing. The lower one, the cross hatch area is only between the two foot and the eight foot. So you run that bar, 50% of that needs to be transparent. I got you. Well, the, ha the hatch is like what the ordinance is, is saying, this is what you need to count. So on the top one, the, we've hatched everything between zero and 12 feet. And then our calculations with, with the, um, if you look on the, on the right-hand side, we've, and it's a little bit small, I guess, so is, it's is the legend. 509 square feet would be required. Yes. And you got 518. So you're just over. Yeah, we're just over. Some stunning uh, computer graphics. <laughs> Any other questions at this time? Is there, um, I noticed on the site plan, it was like a ramp coming down from the sidewalk uh, or, or something that appears as if it will eradicate a lot of the existing vegetated buffer. I'm going to let Will answer that. <clears throat> yeah, um, my name Will, is uh, yeah, just, yeah. Will Swearingen. Um, I work with uh, Bowler Engineering, and the address is uh, 4130 Park Lake Avenue, Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, so Do I'm you swear the, or affirm that the testimony you will provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, proceed. Um, so yes, we are adding in a switchback to add pedestrian access to Newburn Avenue, and that will take down some of the trees, but there still is about a five to eight foot grade jump, and that's why we have that switchback there. So um, even though some of that vegetation will go away, there's a steep drop off from Newburn Avenue to the site, and that will remain. Do you have, is there a tree conservation or landscape buffer? No, we are under uh, two acres here, but the, yeah, we're replanting where we can up front to meet the landscape buffers. 
Do you have a landscape plan at all? Um, I do not think we have it in this set, do we? If you want to take that up, that's fine. Okay. Um, so, yes, the switchback is taking out some of the existing vegetation there. We're adding two larger canopy trees um, just to the left of that switchback, and then adding some shrubs up front to kind of shield it and hide it. So, there will be vegetation planted back in that area to the extent possible. And the Chick fil A is how much lower than Newburn? I think the at that corner, it's about uh, eight feet of difference. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, there's a pretty steep hill from the existing sidewalk down to the property line, and then there's a exist or currently there's about a wall that ranges from about five feet to ten feet on the far left side. So it's it's definitely nestled down there. And to your knowledge, uh, is there anything uh, in the in your development plan that would affect the area that is not being shown as disturbed here in this landscape plan, that kind of white area that's got those trees? Oh, like the, would that existing vegetation remain the I same? Mean, yes, yeah. correct. It would. It would. No, util no new utilities or anything? Correct. I think the utility connections end up coming up right beside um, those existing trees. Okay. Or proposed trees, sorry. I miss said that. And I did want to mention, keep in mind, this is an out parcel in a, the Walmart parking lot. So that side opposite Newburn Avenue is facing a parking lot, not a street. Mm -hmm. So that's why the no requirements there. It's just the Newburn Avenue side. And the whole idea is it's just visual interest. So that's why, you know, even under the or ordinance, that's what it says is to address visual interest. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why the spandrel glass works so well because it creates that very – um, visual interest even though it's not transparent hmm. so that's what we were after here is just to do that and when you say visual interest too I mean we we're just pointing out we know that that switchback is going in there we granted but there's such an elevation difference and so many existing trees there that anybody traveling on Newburn Avenue even if they cross where that switchbacks going they'd be dangerous if they were staring at that enough to, to mm -hmm. see that there were no trees there. Mm -hmm. It's just very wooded. It's a very mature area, and that Ruby Tuesday's been there a, a long time, as have the adjoining Starbucks. So uh, that was kind of our point is if it's visual interest, it's not as much of an issue here since it's in a hole. Yeah. And you can't really see it anyway. But regardless of that, we're going ahead and putting the glass and all that as if you could see it and as if it were just like on the Six Forks store that you could see it. Okay. Any other are questions? there any other questions of me or anyone else? And we have representatives from Chick-fil-A here if there are any particular Chick-fil-A questions. I guess I just wonder if there's anything that would preclude the ramp from being located anywhere else along the east-west. I'll let Will address that. Yeah, that's definitely the lowest. Uh, that's where we're closest grade-wise. Um, as soon as you get uh, plan left, kind of up Newburn Avenue, that wall gets significantly taller. Yep. So it would warrant a significantly larger yeah. switchback. You'd be going back and forth. A and then there's, that. and I, but I guess a little less sidewalk once you get down to the bottom of the hill, right? Correct. Because yeah. you might be closer to your, to your intended destination. Um, yeah, I would say that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. Any other questions? I think we'll go ahead and uh, close this part up for now. Sure. We can open it back up if we need. If to. any other questions, yeah, just open it back up. But um, you know, that's our presentation. We feel like it meets the intent. Okay. Of the ordinance with this design alternate. Thank, Thank you. you.
We will now hear from any other individuals wishing to provide factual testimony in, from the public concerning this request. Anyone from the public? Hearing none, I will close the, uh, this case for deliberation by the commission. Anybody have any thoughts? I think to me, uh, knowing that we saw a very similar case and this and the, I think the similar case uh, on Six Forks didn't have any uh, transom transparency um, and this one does. Um, I think the topography, the existing vegetation and the spandrel grass along with the transparency uh, where they could is a pretty strong case for um, meeting the, the findings. Anybody have any other thoughts, conditions? No, I would agree with what you just said. I'm going to move to approve, uh, unless we'd like to discuss the findings more. But I believe it meets the intent. Yeah, I would second that approval as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The commission's written decision will be adopted when the minutes of this meeting are adopted and the written decision will be provided to the applicant and other parties with the right to such notice following the adoption of the decision. I'm assuming there was none in op No opposition. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate it. We will now open uh, the evidence you're hearing for an item for, for item DA3 2023 on today's agenda. Casey Evans will int introduce this hearing. Thank you. All right. The subject property is located on the east side of the street at 6108 Creedmoor Road. The property is zoned commercial mixed use, three stories, conditional use. The developer proposes a general building to be used as a self-storage facility with frontage along Creedmoor Road. Um, this project might look familiar to some of you um, since the project previously came before the commission with a similar design alternate request. Um, that was back, I believe, in October. Um, however, since the previous approval, the applicant has made some changes to the building design, um, and therefore the commission, um, the case is back, a new request is back before the commission this evening for similar um, types of requests. The applicant is requesting three design alternates related to transparency. The requests are to reduce the ground story, the second story, and the third story transparency on the west facade of the building which faces Creedmoor Road. Buildings in the CX district are required to have a minimum of 33% transparency on the ground story and 20% transparency on each upper story. And here are your transparency findings um, for reference. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Casey. Can the applicant come up and present their case? The applicant will now present evidence and legal arguments in support of the request. As a reminder, any evidence and argument must focus on the applicable standards. Before you begin, please state your name, address, and relation to the case. Hi, I'm Ashley honeycutt Terrazas. I'm with Parker Poe, uh, 301 Fayetteville uh, Street, Suite uh, 1400, um, here on behalf of the applicant. Um, and I'd like to ask that our application presentation, case report, and supporting materials be accepted into the record. OK, yeah. thank you. And before we get started, would, uh, I'm, I expect one witness to testify uh, this afternoon. Do you want to go ahead and swear him in? Sure. OK. Clay, you want to come sworn in? Uh, my name is Cleve Pate, uh, the project architect, um, G. Cleveland Pate, PLLC, and uh, uh, I've spoken with y'all a couple times before on this. Thank you. Yeah, uh, hold on. Do you swear 
or affirm that the testimony you will provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And you get another punch in your punch card. <laughs> okay, we're, um, we're here with three transparency design alternates for 6108 Creemore Road. Um, like Casey said, this may look and sound very familiar to you because we were here in October for transparency design alternates related to the same project, which the board approved. Um, prior design alternates uh, granted during the, uh, were granted during the ASR phase of development. That ASR was approved. Now we're in the SPR phase, um, and during the SPR phase, uh, applicants can seek a minor modification that allows a slightly larger building um, under section 10.2.8E of the UDO. Um, and so we're, we plan to seek that minor modification um, and increase the building size by about 3,600 square feet, which also increases the size of the facade. Um, but the, the transparency uh, percentages in the design are not uh, changing. Uh, it's just the because the square footage of transparency is actually increasing because the facade size is increasing. Um, that's why we're here today uh, requesting new design alternates. Uh, so again, this slide just shows the site, surrounding area for context, 6108 Creemore Road. It's about two to, uh, 2.3 acres across the street from Jeffreys Grove Elementary School. Um, commercial uses are generally oriented along the Creemore Road in this area. Uh, this is the current site plan. Again, we're in SPR now. Um, it's a three-story heated and cooled uh, indoor self-storage facility. Um, and these are our three design alternate requests. Um, Again, I'll just you know run through them. Eight percent ground story transparency, five point five percent in the uh, three between three and eight feet. Nine percent uh, second story transparency, and thirteen uh, percent third story transparency is our, our request this afternoon. Uh, and again, we're all very familiar with the the findings. Um, Again, the approved alternate is consistent with the intent of the transparency requirements, and the street-facing building facade utilizes other architectural, artistic, or landscape treatments to create visual interest to offset the reduction in transparency. And we will present competent material and substantial evidence through our expert witness uh, that each design alternate uh, should be granted. So at this point, I'm going to call Cleve, Cleve Pate up here, um, and he's already been sworn in. So. Cleve, please state your name, address, education, and experience for the commission. Uh, name is Cleve Pate. The address is 6013 Fordland Drive. Uh, I'm an uh, uh, architectural degree uh, uh, in North Carolina, multiple states, NCARB uh, certificate. Uh, I've been in business for 20 plus years okay. in Raleigh, Cary. Uh, at this time, I'd like to tender Cleve as an expert in architecture and building design. Uh, what is your role in this project? The project architect. Okay. And uh, this slide, this slide shows the interior layout of each floor. Can you explain the design goals that are driving transpar the transparency and the relief that we're seeking? Sure. Um, one of the main design goals on, on storage buildings is security. Uh, and which sometimes transparency, especially at lower levels, uh, can be in conflict with that security goal. Uh, what we try to do is to provide customers feeling confident in that as they're storing in this building uh, that they do have uh, adequate security. Uh, the other aspect of it is, is really in a building like this, especially storage, uh, there's an efficiency factor involved in it. And with that, we try to do uh, double loaded corridors. And if, if you look at the plan, you'll notice that most corridors here are double loaded, which puts transparency, I mean, uh, the uh, units on the outside of the building, which uh, is by its very nature reduces the transparency because it does create a security issue, also a safety issue as people are storing things that, which you would not do next to glass. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the goal as far as that goes. And I've seen uh, storage facilities that maintain, that have transparency through faux, those faux facades. Uh, that with backlit windows. Uh, did you evaluate that here? We did evaluate that, uh, and we chose to go in somewhat of a different direction. Uh, 
Uh, part of it is 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 the is kind of a wasteful facade in terms of that. We we did which we will get to. We did do a little some of that on the corners of the building, uh, but we felt like that the so the faux windows. Uh, uh, and corridors on the front of the building to a great extent did not add to the design of the building. Um, so with that, we've kind of, we kind of went in a different direction. All right. This slide shows our elevations uh, mm -hmm. and transparency. Can you walk through the transparency that we're providing here? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, as you're looking at the elevation, you've got the uh, main loading, which is in the center of the building. Uh, those are a, uh, a double slide air, sliding doors. Uh, we've added this since the last, uh, as you discussed, and as far as making the elevations larger, uh, we added glass in order to increase the percentages, make them more than what they were before. Uh, so we also put side lights on the side of the double sliders. Uh, we have glass on the, as you're looking at the elevation, on the right side, on the first floor, uh, the second floor and the third floor on the corner element. Uh, on the left side of the building, because of a grade change, which is actually a little bit more than maybe even what shows here, we don't have glass on the first floor because of the grade situation there, but we do have glass on the second and third. We also made the glass that, uh, on each end of the building wider than what we previously had. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the third floor, uh, in, the, in the center of the building, above the main entry, we also have glass panels there, uh, and those were actually a little bit wider than they were on the initial submittal. Okay, can you um, describe some of the architectural features that you've included to offset the reduced transparency and create uh, visual interest? Yeah, and that was that was part of in in terms of the elevation, and that's what I was really alluding to before, as far as not having so much in terms of of a lot of faux windows on the front. We've included a lot of architectural features by utilizing different materials, uh, which are really high end materials. As you can see, we've got a fair amount of brick on the building. Um, and, and we, we break that brick up. There is an outset to it, so we do have a shadow line on it. We have a, uh, the, the darker elements between the brick is an architectural three body block. Uh, the above the brick on the vertical elements, we use an architectural panel, uh, which is a Kynar finish panel. It's a horizontal rib panel. So it's a very attractive, very attractive panel. Uh, then we, the, some of the other elements are is that we do EFAS, but we break it up. We break the EFAS up with some subtle color changes. So as you go across the facade, you get a constant change in, in, uh, in, in materials and color. Uh, we use an aluminum storefront, which is very nice, and then, then the glass. And then also our canopies are matching of our storefront mm -hmm. on there. So we, that's one of the reasons we don't, need to get anything as far as a blank facade um, alternate because we do so much on the on the elevations uh, this slide shows the planting and the TCA the tree conservation area plan which is consistent with the approved landscape plan for the site can you explain the impact of the planned landscaping on the views and visual interest of the Creemore uh, Road facade. Yeah, uh, what's being included there with the landscape architect and, and civil engineering is that we've got uh, uh, some nice uh, uh, trees and shrubs between the sidewalk of the building, which really uh, softens the building a little bit, which would be typically you'd want to do anyway with any building. Uh, it also gives a little better pedestrian experience for people that are on the sidewalk or even driving by on the building. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this, I don't think I did mention it before, and, I, and you may ask this question, Ashley, but I want to, do want to go back on it real quickly. In terms of the glazing, uh, what we, one thing we did is that, it's, it, which you can see on the side elevations, is that we did put glazing on each end of the building on the corners. And if in that glazing we felt like was more impactful to have those corner features, uh, even though that glazing does not count 
on the front elevation in terms of the percentage we're talking about, we felt like from people that are driving or passing the building that it gave a better look, a, a larger uh, architectural impact to it. And if you were to take that glass and put it on the facade, it would basically almost meet the yeah. requirements there. The second, third story. All right. Um, these are all my questions. Thank you, Cleve. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, and do we have any questions for Cleve before I summarize? Go ahead. Cleaver or, um, okay, uh, members of the commission, I would like to quickly summarize the evidence that you heard on each design alternate finding, um, addressing the two transparency elements. Uh, first finding, the intent of, the, of transparency is to provide transparency and visual interest for both pedestrians and occupants, which our project provides. Uh, as an initial matter, the intent of the transparency requirements, as Cleve discussed, is not um, really applicable here since the plans um, Self-storage facility will have very few occupants, uh, only you know who are coming and going and dropping off um, and retrieving their things from the secure facility. It's not a facility that should have very much interaction with pedestrians, but you know, um, but customers come in their cars in the facility, drop things off, and and to the extent they are passing by on that sidewalk, there we have um, the architectural features and the landscaping that Mr. Uh, Pate discussed. Um, and the building has to uh, convey security to the customers, and the, as uh, Cleve discussed, the transparency tends to impede that. Um, and with the set respect to the second finding, um, we've looked at, uh, even so, we provided glazing on the corners and the center of the building that, to look into fake hallways. Uh, we've also utilized different materials and material changes on the facade, as Cleve described. And finally, we plan to provide attractive trees and landscaping between the sidewalk uh, and the building. Uh, this glazing materials and landscaping will provide visual interest uh, to this secure storage facility. So um, in summary, we presented competent material, substantial evidence uh, to meet the design alternate elements, and uh, we respectfully request that the commission approve our request. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here from the public to speak on this case? Hearing none, uh, the commission will now close the hearing and bring the matter to the table. Actually, Adam, could I, could I add a couple questions? Yeah, sorry. Sure. Yeah, um, do you have anything in your presentation that shows what the design used to look like when we approved it the last time? Yeah, that was the second slide. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so that's, uh, that. this is the one that was approved last time. This is the one we're asking for this time. So it's, Can you do that a couple times? I sure, guess. sure. <laughs> I probably should have put it on the same slide, <laughs> yeah. And then it has uh, that little table there was also included in the in the materials. Um, and so it was 13 percent and 10 percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what is it now? It's uh, so so the on the left that's DA 1622 that was the approval back in October, Vermont. and then on the right of that table that's our request. Oh, I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank so, you. Almost. How, the same. how much longer did the, did that facade get? I think it got like 10 feet, 10 feet longer. Is that Pretty correct? Minor. Enough that it kicked it back to us, apparently. Yeah, I guess so. Um, and then uh, it looks like the, n the main trees planted along the road, between the road and the building, are eastern red cedar and black gums. Is that right? Do you want, I have our, our civil engineer here if you'd like him to come up and talk. I'm just curious, and Adam, you may know this. Like, how me, tall do me, those get? Let me, let me pull it up. I was just looking at it. Uh, Uh, yeah, 20 to 30 feet. Um, the wildfires don't get huge. It says 50 to 60 feet. I've never seen that um, in a situation like that. But For which one? The, the black, um, black, gum. black gum. What about the eastern red cedar? Same. Yeah. And how tall is the building? Luke, do you want to come speak to that? 40 feet. 40 and 4 inches. Do you, do you want our... 40 feet. Good enough. Just make sure everything's on the record if you want it to be on the record. Yeah, if you want it to be on the record, I can oh, yeah. get him up here. You want to do I mean, if we're talking building height, then it might need to be clean more than me. But yeah. yeah. Well, come on up. We'll, we'll do it anyway, just for good measure. <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs> Set your name, address, in relation to the case. 
Uh, Luke Perkins with Swift Partners, 414 Fayetteville Street, um, civil engineer. Uh-huh. And do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. You just kind of redo that little thing there. <laughs> Yeah, so the building elevation is 40 feet, 4 inches. I think that was the question. It was, yep. Thank you. And uh, can you just state the, do you know the difference in the base FFE and the um, elevation uh, where those plants are located? Um, I can look at that real quick if you'd like <laughs> yeah, that. Sure. Pull up the planting, or the grading plan here. So the building finished floor elevation is 427.5. Um, the grade along the facade of the building on Creedmoor ranges from 426 to 433-ish. Where those plant, where those trees are, we're just trying to get an idea of the height of those trees, the real visual. Yeah, they're. they're it slopes down, so basically that was the sidewalk, and those trees are adjacent to the sidewalk. It does slope down there, so it might be more like uh, 425 to 432. Okay. But they're, they're almost all above finished floor elevation. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, um, could you come back up? Just, I just had one last one. Um, yep. Are those all code required trees? Do you know? Or is that, are you guys going above and beyond? I'm just curious. Um, that is a required buffer uh -huh. uh, between the right of way and this specific use. Uh, I don't know that those trees in particular are required. I mean, it, it definitely meets the requirement because this is approved. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we go above or beyond. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Hearing no additional questions that, or presentation of relevant facts, um, well, did you want to wrap anything up, or is that good? I, I did my summary. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Commission will now close the hearing and bring the matter to the table. <clears throat> Any thoughts from the commission? I, I think they've again met the intention here, and you know, in terms of you know, many different forms of architectural detail, agreed with our previous alignment to you know push the glass to the corners as well as um, you know preferring architectural treatment versus kind of a, a fake facade of glass to mm -hmm. nowhere um, and then yes the element of the the landscaping that again adds to that level of I, I think they've they've met the intent yeah yeah I generally agree with that uh, you know, is really has not substantially changed from the last time we saw it. Um, you know, the landscaping is all, uh, I don't think it, uh, I kind of take the landscaping out in my mind just because its intent is as a required buffer, not as something to do with the transparency, the change in transparency, but um, it certainly is going to ha have an impact on it. Any other thoughts? Anyone want to make a motion? A motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion uh, is approved unanimously. Uh, the commission's written decision will be adopted when the minutes of this meeting are adopted and the Written decision will be provided to the applicant and other parties with the right to such notice following the adoption of the decision. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. All right, we will now open the evidentiary hearing for item DA4 2023 on today's agenda. Casey Evans will introduce the hearing. 
The subject property is located at 2000 Falls Valley Drive at the southwest corner of Falls Valley Drive and Coxendale Drive. The property is zoned plan development. The applicant is proposing a general building um, for use as a self-storage facility. The applicant is requesting 10 total design alternates, seven of which have to do with transparency and three for blank wall. Specifically, the applicant is requesting to reduce the transparency on the north building, building facade, so that's the ground story, and then also the second and third stories. For complete relief from the transparency on the east side and the south side of the building, and complete relief from the blank wall requirements on the north, east, and south sides of the building. Um, these sides face Falls Valley Drive, Coxendale Drive, and Interstate 540. Transparency is required for each side of the building facing a public street, and in this case, a minimum of 33% is required on the ground story and 20% is required at each upper story. And as you've seen already a couple times this evening, you have your two findings that are required to satisfy um, or to grant a transparency design alternate. Blank wall is also required for each side of the building facing a public street to prevent monotonous expanses of building mass. Blank wall for general buildings is limited to 30 feet. And there are four design alternate findings that must be satisfied in order to grant a design alternate for blank wall. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Casey. The applicant will now present evidence and legal arguments in support of the request. As a reminder, any evidence and argument must focus on the applicable standards. Before you begin, please state your, uh, for the record, your name, address, in relation to the case. Samuel Morris with Longleaf Law Partners, 4509 Creedmoor Road, Suite 302, here on behalf of the applicant. Um, I'd like to just quickly request that our application and all supporting materials also be accepted into the record. Um, thank you all and good evening, members of the Appearance Commission. Um, like I said, my name is Samuel Morris with Longleaf Law Partners here on behalf of the applicant and development team, um, DeWitt Carolinas. I'm joined this evening by Neil King, project manager at DeWitt Carolinas, um, who's the developer of this project, and also joined by Devin Gray with JKRP Architects. Our request this evening relate to the Falls Valley Self Storage Facility. Um, located at 2000 Falls Valley Drive. So um, just take a quick look back at the overall site plan to orient you to the nature of our requests. Um, due to the unique, unique shape of this parcel, three sides are technically street facing, um, that being the north side facing Falls Valley Drive, uh, the east side facing Coxendale Drive, and the south side facing 540, the outer belt line. Uh, the west side, which is not street facing, of course, is the kind of naturally the uh, primary building entrance due to the shape of the parcel and the grading. That's um, where the entrance um, kind of has to be. And of course, that is our one uh, non street facing facade. Um, so that is where the kind of primary public facing um, entrance will be located, as well as the drop off area. Um, so just want to orient you to kind of the unique context of this parcel and its orientation to the public rights of way that are driving these requests. As you heard, um, we have a number of requests and this looks like a lot, but I think it's fairly simple when we break it down. Um, that north elevation along Falls Valley Drive, we're requesting a reduction in transparency. Um, we do provide some amount of transparency at that corner um, where that northwestern kind of entrance is located. So between zero and 12 feet, um, just to make it easy for you know, 308 between zero and 12. You've got this 140 between three and eight, 95 on the second story, and 161 on the third story. So those are the kind of <laughs> reductions that we're seeking on that northern side. We're also, as you heard, um, requesting a what we're calling complete relief from the blank wall requirements, not on not just on the north, but on the east and south elevation as well. Um, working with staff, 
we ended up just kind of providing a visual representation of the blank wall request that we're making as opposed to translating it into a numerical request. Um, so it's not complete in the literal sense. Um, it's a large portion of the facade, but there is a mix of materials. Um, and we've articulated that through a visual that exhibit that we'll show you below. And then on the east and south elevations, again, both fairly straightforward. Um, no transparency is being provided on either that east Coxendale side or that south 540 side. There's thick vegetation between the street and the road on those sides and not uh, genuinely street facing kind of in the traditional sense. Um, and so on those, both of those sides, we're not proposing any transparency. And again, we'll show you through the exhibits below requesting what we're calling kind of complete relief from the blank wall requirements, as you'll see in just a second. So now that you kind of are oriented to the request, we'll take a step back and look at this property. Again, this is 2000 Falls Valley Drive, a unique shaped property located just off of Falls of the Noose Road, north of 540. It is the final phase of a commercial planned development district um, that was approved a number of years ago uh, for this area. And so here's the proposed site plan for the uh, Falls Valley self-storage facility. Um, just kind of quickly walking through, looking at this west side, um, this is the one non-street facing side. Um, however, that is where our primary building entrance is gonna be located. That's where pedestrians will drop off their belongings to enter the building. Um, and so we do provide transparency on this corner um, which you'll see on the elevations. There is transparency provided there, although it's not required by the UDO. Looking at the northern side of the building, um, we will be including similarly transparency kind of in this location as doing the kind of corner transparency that you're probably used to seeing in self-storage units. Um, so we will be providing some transparency. That's the side with those reduced numbers. Um, this building face is set back about 40 feet from the right of way. It will include a row of street trees, and we are also propo proposing a type C2 buffer between the building and the sidewalk. So kind of essentially two rows of trees are being provided. Along the east side, um, there's a you know, setback variably between you know 20 ish and up to about 100 feet as you move back to the rear portion of the building um, as you can see there's also a large tree conservation area about 15,000 square feet located on that side of the building and again street trees and a type c2 buffer separating coxendale drive from that east elevation and then finally the south as you can see it's separated uh, substantially from the 540 belt line by, um, as you'll see in a moment, some fairly thick vegetation, a buyer retention pond, and there actually is a sound wall there along I-540, so genuinely cannot even see the property from that right of way. So here's the exhibit that we provided uh, staff with as part of our request. Um, the area you see highlighted in blue is what we're calling our kind of complete blank wall area request. Um, these are considered blank wall um, as a kind of technicality. We'd say this is proposing, uh, as you can see, kind of between two and six inch relief changes as well as color changes. Um, but under the UDO, anything less than a 12 inch relief shift doesn't qualify to break up the blank wall and mere color change alone without it being a full material change also doesn't break up the blank wall. So. Um, for UDO purposes, uh, that is all considered one blank wall area. <clears throat> and you can also see the transparency provided on that northwestern corner. Um, however, looking at the chart, you can see the UDO required transparency here, and then what we've provided, which of course falls short of the UDO standard requirements. The next two are fairly straightforward. This is that south elevation. Again, everything inside of that highlighted blue area. Although there is depth change, color change, and none of those uh, rise to the level of technically breaking up the wall for UDO purposes. And there is no transparency being provided on this southern 
highway facing side. And then finally going over to that east, this is the Coxendale side, very similar to the south side. Um, no transparency provided given the um, setback and, and buffering between the building and the road and all of that EFIS area within the blue line is considered blank wall. So that's the nature of our requests. And with that, I'm gonna kind of pass it over to the architects to walk you through some prettier pictures and kind of explanations as to the design of this building. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hey. Um Go ahead and state your name. Uh, Devin Gray with JKRP Architects. And your address? Uh, 100 East Penn Square, Suite 19080, Philadelphia, PA, 19107. Okay. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so as Sam said, uh, it's kind of, um, we're, we're providing a lot of depth relief uh, on these facades using different levels of thickness of EFIS. Um, we decided to do this uh, to create a consistent looking building and based on the scale of the building, uh, we felt that the, the sort of ins and outs that we're proposing create a better looking building than say changing the material to something radically different every 30 feet just to kind of break it up to meet that code requirement um, or the ordinance requirement, I should say. Um, so we feel that the design that we've created uh, works well and looks good. Um, you know, we're using a series of different materials, EFIS, uh, you know, we've got brick and CMU, decorative CMU at the base to sort of anchor the whole structure. Um, you know, we've got the EFIS breaking the parapet line to, to kind of break up the mass um, and then using higher end finishes at the entrance corner with lots of storefront glazing, metal panel, um, you know, so essentially that's, we kind of looked at this as this is the scale of this building and this is how we feel the mass should be broken up using the materials appropriate for the use. Um, with regard to transparency, uh, you've heard before self storage and transparency don't really go well together, um, you know, for security purposes, um, just maintenance, uh, making sure uh, that, um, people's things that are being stored are not being subjected to UV light at all times. Um, so we provide it at the corner that's the public, uh, the most visible corner. It's where everyone's entering the site. Um, and it's got the display lockers to sort of create a brand identity for the, the, the storage operator. I'm just gonna click through some of these. We prepared some site sections just to give you an idea. Um, there is significant grade change on the site. So from Falls Valley, the first floor is actually partially below grade uh, as you move along Falls Valley towards Coxendale Drive. Um, there's quite a lot of vegetation between Co Coxendale Drive and the building. Uh, so you won't actually see that facade. Same thing with the south facade. You don't see it from the highway. Uh, here's the landscaping plan so you can just see uh, all the trees being provided and they're there. And a couple of existing shots. This is where the entrance to the property, to the site would be uh, to the right here. And you can see there is a lot of vegetation uh, up by the circle at Coxendale. This is what you would see looking from Coxendale towards the building. So you have all these trees between the building and, and the road. And then from the highway. And then we prepared these 3D views just to give you a sense of this is what the actual mass looks like with the different changes in playing with the EFIS. And then we've layered in sort of the, the landscaping beyond the building and then the landscaping in front of the building that's as shown on the landscape plan. And so you, you're, the landscaping itself is really screening the building uh, and you're not seeing a big blank wall at any point when you're walking along the street or driving past. Again, the main entrance corner, most of the glass is actually on the west facade. It's not street facing, but it is the main entrance point. It's what you see as you approach the site coming down the road. Again, just layering the background and, and the actual landscaping. Uh, 
And that's it for me. If anyone's got any questions. Not at this time. Thank you, Devin. Um, yeah, and so in short, we think based on what we've presented, um, a lot of thought has gone into this design given the location, the unique nature of this par uh, parcel, uh, the use involved, um, such that we do think we meet the required standards for the requests proposed. Uh, the proposed building design um, we think is generally consistent with that overall intent of the UDO's street facing facade regulations uh, when you take into account the unique context on this property and the, of course, limited applicability of those regulations to the self-storage use. Um, as you've heard many times, those chief concerns are security, preservation of materials inside, all of which diverge slightly from the transparency regulations and I think all of us think maybe justify a text change in the future sometime even um, about just you know, the relationship between these regulations and this particular use, um, just to keep that in mind when considering the intent requirement. Um, additionally, uh, the requests are offset by substantial vertical landscaping, as you saw, on all sides. And um, additionally, there's subtle architectural treatments that are added to the building in order to increase the overall design of the building, um, arguably more than more prominent articulation. Uh, would. So we think the substantial high quality landscaping with the subtlety of design together um, really do offset any reduction in transparency and blank wall area. And uh, finally, just regarding you know neighbors and utilizing blank wall to elevate the overall design, um, we'd say that we kind of it, it was it, we intentionally decreased the amount of transparency in some of the material change as Devin just walked through. That, that was an intentional decision, a design based decision. Um, for the purpose of creating a quiet, a safe building that's subtle in its design and that blends into the landscape and the surrounding kind of residential context as opposed to being, you know, some flashy building. Um, neighbors generally don't want transparency for self-storage facilities and would prefer these types of subtle, unassuming buildings that focus their efforts, uh, design efforts on attractive landscaping as opposed to lots of articulation and movement along the building facade. Um, so the neutral tones, the kind of simple design, and contrast with the heavy landscaping, those were all chosen for the purpose of creating a kind of uh, well-worked into the landscape uh, building that fits the context and does in fact reduce adverse outcomes for neighbors and pedestrians and creates a nice walkable environment. Um, overall, we do believe that um, the reductions create an overall better design um, than what would be possible under strict compliance of the code. Um, so therefore, we respectfully request that you grant these design alternates. Happy to take any further questions. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Um, related to that third, um, third bullet under the blank wall, what is the context around this building? Do you have anything showing what that is? Yeah, I can, um, well, I don't, like, like of actual like architecture of the surrounding neighborhood. I'm put, going back to the zoning. Um, I think the best context wise, what we are is a kind of a transitional property. We are transitioning out of this kind of larger commercial development back into the residential neighborhoods along Coxendale and Woodstone Drive. Um, and so part of the plan development, uh, yeah, we have shod buffers, some of the, you know, a, additional buffering requirements that were included as part of that understanding that this would be a, a commercial property that serves as a transition over into the single family residential. Um, just looking at the aerials, obviously some of these are fairly sizable single family homes. Um, but yeah, just in general, the kind of neutral tones, heavy landscaping, kind of keeping it simple in design are all geared towards um, and not a flashy commercial building trying to kind of meet the intent what's directly across falls valley drive neil might be able to answer better what the actual use of that building across the street is i think it might have a couple different uses i believe you're talking about here i'm neil king i am with dewitt carolinas our address is 3301 benson drive raleigh 
Uh, Do you directly, swear or affirm that the testimony you will provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, go ahead. I believe that building just north of us off of Fall, Falls Valley Drive is a small medical office building. Single story? Yes. I got two questions. One is, I guess I'd say this plan differs a little bit from some of the more recent self-storage facility designs that we've seen, just in terms of change in materiality being a more common element of some of the others. Um, could you, I got touched on a little bit, but could you just explain a little bit more why that wasn't explored here? Sure. Uh, we felt that kind of changing the materiality just for the sake of changing it to meet that requirement gets a little busy. Um, and, you know, we were looking at this in terms of the scales of those facades, three stories, and creating the vertical elements to kind of break it down so it felt like smaller pieces. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, there are other approaches where you could to really break it up with various materials. Uh, we were trying not to make it too busy. We were trying to keep the sort of masonry based anchor it and then the lighter uh, upper stories and then just break in that parapet line so that it feels like it's several smaller pieces. And then my second question is in the plans, it looks like for the internal circulation, there's an exterior corridor that kind of wraps as opposed to there being units facing the exterior or you know, having the exterior wall as a common wall? So that's a, this is actually an old plan that we did that met all the requirements of the UDO. Um, it obviously reduces the efficiency of the storage lockers significantly, um, which is why we ended up, you know, DeWitt wanted to come in and, and talk to you guys and get this, this uh, alternate design because it just, it, significantly reduces the efficiency of, of the project. So that is not correct in terms of the internal circulation? Correct, yeah. Lockers are up against the exterior walls so that you have double loaded corridors. You know, every single single loaded corridor is, is just really not efficient from a, from a leasable space perspective. And there's, do you, are you able to show us the interior plan that you're proposing? Uh, do we have that in this slide, Jim? I don't. Uh, not in this presentation. Okay. Is it in the packet that you submitted to the city? I don't. No, that was a recent. Right. Yeah, it has not been formally updated. Okay. I see. Yeah. Well, I had some questions about the landscape. Um, I don't know who the right person to talk to is with that. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> So I think my main concern is the the landscape strategy along Falls Valley and Coxendale, specifically where it comes to that roundabout. Um, you know, as as you presented, the idea of adding the C2 buffer was to create more uh, opacity, less transparency between those street views and the building. Um, however, the the plant selection you know, obviously you meet the C2 requirements of numbers of trees, but the plant selection, I think um, in, in two ways, doesn't really do what you're trying to do, which is to create that opacity. Uh, one, some of these species are not gonna do well, so they're never really gonna grow to the place that they should uh, grow to do what you want them to do, provide the function. And two, I think just the species that you've selected are smaller than you could have you know they're the smallest versions of of the categories with which you've selected so um i'm just wondering what the strategy is there and i know you probably can't talk to that because you're not the person who picked those but uh see what you can do okay i'd start off by saying i i'm not sure if the c2 buffer is required under the pd zoning but i think that specific c2 having a that type of vegetated buffer um mm -hmm was part of that kind of rezoning process when they agreed to allow this be used 
for commercial purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know exactly how much wiggle room there is in the code with regards to that C2 buffer. Oh, I, I think the C2 buffer is a good idea. I just right. think that plants that you chose to right. put in the C2 buffer okay. aren't, aren't meeting the intent of what okay. you all had said in your case, what you were intending to do, which is to create that opacity right. at several heights. Okay, gotcha. Yes, and so we're happy to look into yeah, what flexibility might exist in uh, plant selection within the C2 buffer. Mm-hmm. Um, and the street trees, yeah. And the street trees. Yeah, I know the street trees are Zelkova, and then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you've got the Acer Saccharinium, the sugar maples. Sugar maples, and then and uh, the Zelkovas are really, uh, like, the Zelkovas will do fine, but uh, they, they're, they're like the smallest version of what you can put out there. And the sugar maples are really not going to, they're really going to struggle to do well. There. Okay. Um, the the Labelli pines, though, good, good, they'll, they'll do what you're talking about. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Not to get new, too nitpicky, but that's right. an important point, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so certainly the intent was not to put trees in plants that weren't going to survive. The intent was certainly to, to uh, you know, yeah. get the type of vegetative buffer that, that was intended kind of on the plan. Um, and it's an important design feature since you're going to, put a corner with a bunch of blank wall uh, right at that roundabout. So yes, that's understood. Important. That's the only, that's the main point I had. Um, any architectural questions before we close the hearing or hear from the public? Hearing none. Um, I'll see. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak? Looks like uh, just the three of you. So. <laughs> Seeing none, uh, any last questions before we close the hearing? Hearing no additional questions or a presentation of relevant facts, the commission will now close the hearing and bring the matter to the table. Anybody want to start off with some thoughts? I think I'll just say, you know, architecturally, I might leave it to some of you all to speak to it. I, I think, you know, they made a reasonable case, I guess, um, architecturally. From a landscape perspective, in terms of what they're doing uh, to, uh, as it re- is relevant to the case, uh, I think it's okay, and I, I think I just made my point that the plant selection is not doing what they want it to, but it could be easily adjusted to create large canopy trees that would do well and really fill that space instead of the smallest version that's not going to do well and really not do what was illustrated in some of those uh, renderings or elevations. I also I did notice there's a... Um, so this is up on a kind of up on a plinth in terms of what you see from 540. Uh, so what that what's happening over there is a, is a big deal. And the city of Raleigh sewer easement will make kind of a hole in the landscape that they're trying to map. Um, and that'll make for some views. I don't know if it really matters that much. Oh, the, the hole is angled away from the direction of travel. Yeah, so it so looks like that yeah. plan view, but you will see, you know, kind of, yeah. There. Yeah. there. You know, those trees will eventually get big, but they won't be for a long time. I think just going to the um, notion of the landscape, um, I actually think the concept of a quiet building shrouded in a beautiful landscape, um, for me, is preferable to the collage of different materials in an attempt to create visual interest. Um, and the it, so that that to me means that your comments about the landscape take on even more significance. Like it actually needs to be a beautiful landscape. It actually needs to grow in in a relatively short period of time to the scale that's advertised. Um, it needs to be maintained and survive. Um, and if if that's the the strategy, um, but but that to me is a is a valid way to think about um, making a a an, you know a building that is difficult to make beautiful, <laughs> uh, more beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's better lipstick. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we see a lot, probably, I haven't been here for long, but I have a feeling you see a lot of um, 
collages of different materials that are very flat, mm-hmm. no, no depth, which to me is actually the purpose of transparency is to create depth. It's not, not about different materials. Um, and so I think the landscape in this case creates a foreground and the building is a background, which you know, could, could work really well, provided the landscape's actually nice. Uh, yeah, I completely agree with that. So uh, the number of trees that uh, are presented on this plan are kind of locked in place. They're relative to, they're not like above and beyond. They're a C2 buffer and street trees. Um, if we, you know, if people are happy with, with the number of trees, I think the way to proceed is to try and figure out how to get the right species planted. Um, and I, uh, I'm not sure exactly how we figure that out when it's not just one, it's several, but it may not be more than two or three. Um, anybody, anybody have any thoughts on that? Speaking as the only I, w- <laughs> I would leave, leave that up to the landscape architect. <laughs> Uh, Adam, are you happy with the number of trees that are shown along there? I mean, it's about as, um, yeah, um, not really, but uh, I, I think it. Yeah, I think it meets the findings. Uh, if it was, if it was doing what it was showing, like you said. Um, if they were successful in what they were doing, I think it would be made the findings. Obviously, I would probably want some more, um, especially at that corner. I think that's a pretty important corner visually, um, especially for the residents that move through there. Um, I'm surprised that none of the three property owners in those obviously very expensive houses are here. Are here. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And right at that northeast corner where that dashed circle is, is that a light with no trees around it? Right here and right here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Light with no trees. Light pole with no trees. Yeah. So there's gonna, it's going to be pretty transparent. Uh, you're going to see a lot of that big blank building facade. And that's not in like, that's not going to go away in like 10 years. So. 20, 30 years. Um, so I would be, I mean, I'd be interested to hear if they could do more with the landscape, especially on those um, street facades. Um, not just, I mean, if they, if they would be willing to find a way to add more numbers, um, but also, you know, I think an easy metric is native large canopy trees would be great. Um, you know, I could name some species, but I don't think we need to. Uh, but I mean, these are Japanese maples, sugar maples. They don't really grow well. They don't do well with the heat. They don't get big like you would want to meet the intent. And the Zelkovas, just by the cultivar that they are, are um, meant to be vase-shaped and small. Um, ornamental for a streetscape, which is great if you're, you know, have people walking on it. But if the idea is to create this, like, layered uh, opacity. So you don't see the building, they won't really do that. Um, yeah. So I'd be, I mean, I would be amenable to open it up and just hearing from them uh, based on what they've heard. If anybody, are you all okay with that? Yes. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the this case to hear from the applicants. So you heard all that. Do uh, you have any questions, thoughts, ideas? Um, a few, I guess. On just on a high level, um, I think Dewitt would assert that you know they're very high level property ownership management company mm-hmm. that does a very good job of landscape maintenance, landscape maintenance across all their properties, and feel quite confident that anything that dies will be replaced quickly, or like you know will do a, as good of a job of that as any property management ownership group in the city is going to do. So just to kind of put your mind at ease for that. um, So as much as we can control on that, and we certainly uh, assure the board that those efforts will be taken to make sure that everything does stay alive and it does become beautiful and uh, manifest as we've presented it here. Um, 
regarding like the kind of cat- categorical issues with with the landscaping that's been chosen we just yeah if you have any suggestions about changes that would be made um if it's something that could be accomplished through a condition here whether it's just a slightly higher uh planting height if it's a shift if you have a particular yeah. cultivar in mind instead of the sugar maple um maybe we can't get to a condition here but it's at least something to go back and talk to our landscape people see if there is a change that can be made to yeah, better um, to better reach the intent yeah that's great um so i think two two points would you be willing to uh, where are you at in the process right now are, is this are you all like really pressed right now or is it easy for you to kind of go back to jay davis and say hey can you do a little can you respond to what the commission has said here yes we are currently in the asr process looking to resubmit for a third time shortly uh-huh. okay so you've been in, you've been around for a while um so i think It'd be interesting to see if you could get more numbers, but that's hard to condition, obviously. Right. Uh, where are you going to put them, and what does that look like? Um, what types of trees? Yeah, what types of trees. Um, yeah. And I'm sure you have seen, I mean, the, the Zelkovas, as would, uh, you know, the 36 to 40 foot range at maturity, is that? I guess maybe that's not in your personal experience as someone that has a lot more hands-on experience that a lot of, yeah, these numbers aren't always what they seem, but, um, yeah. From, yeah. For, for, you know, we're going back, I mean, we're looking at 50, 60 instead, kind of at maturity. I know that, um, or is it genuinely, like you said, is it type of likelihood of survival issues? Yeah, it's a little both, you okay. know, they're, they're kind of small cultivars and they don't do well, that well in the summer heat, um, on, on the street like that. But, uh, I don't want to get too in the weeds. Um, I think that, um, well, I think that I've heard enough. We, we can go ahead and close it. And okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other thoughts hearing that? I'm neither an architect or a landscape architect, so I'm, I'm not commenting on the landscape. I, I think I have a, a little bit of concern over, you know, particularly with self-storage facilities, given that they tend to buck the intention and unique ways Mm -hmm. we tend to see a high degree of precedent and then return of a similar design being reused Mm so you know do we feel that you know if this design were to come back to us obviously every case is unique and different um Mm -hmm. in the site conditions but um you know have they done enough to meet that intent of the intention of architectural interest or is that is there a better, you know, is there another intent uh, with regards to what's really underneath the intention of architectural interest mm-hmm. that is at play here? If, you know, if, yes, if I am also surprised, um, that is a common thing for neighbors to show up and say, we don't, you know, want the transparency directly looking at our properties. They are not here to say that, but um, that has often come up for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing that we've experienced before is just, approving designs as different than presented to us um and in this case it's fairly minor of it being the interior circulation but um yeah i if nothing else just want to note that it's helpful to have the designs accurate in front of us yeah easy to miss stuff when it's not accurate i mean that that one corner uh that is completely opaque is probably a hundred feet from a house. It's one thing to yeah. keep in mind, whether those people are here or not. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, that was what stood out to me yeah. at a traffic circle, yeah. wide open. I, you know, hearing what, what you said, Will, I think I would love to see an updated plan. And I, I mean, I kind of hate to do it. They've already had three rounds in ASR, um, but the in- inaccuracy of the floor plan and the difficulty of putting conditions on what we've described as, you know, a- an attempt to meet the intent of the transparency and blank wall, but not quite getting it, uh, I, I might, I would probably lean to look for some more information in a future case or hearing. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I agree with Matt's comments about um, trying to make the building more or less disappear, Mm -hmm. become subservient to the landscape in front of it. 
And so, Will, to your question, you know, if this was on another site someplace, it came back to us again. I mean, I think that treatment of trying to cover it up using landscape is probably the right way to go, no matter if it's here or someplace else. So um, I don't know that we're necessarily setting a bad precedent, um, but I agree with you, Adam. Like, it is tough to put a condition on um, what you want to see, what you want to ensure gets put in place is actually going to do well mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. achieve that, that design goal. So I would support um, continuing it to another time. Okay. Um, yeah, so, and I think there are some cases where we would have a storage facility that was in a more kind of urban graded environment where there just wasn't much between the building, there wasn't enough between the building and, this, and the street to do anything with landscape. Um, I, we kind of saw that on the last one. So sometimes building facade is, is really important. I would say here it may be less important on at least several of the sides because we can do it with landscape and so there's an opportunity here. Um, and yeah, so I think my last comments are, you know, I would love to see a landscape plan that, you know, did a better job of creating that more opaque transition um, and, and using the landscape to, to meet the transparency requirements. Um, and a, a really successful way in my experience of doing that is using plant material that is native to the area that gets really big and is really happy. And in the, the Loblay ponds you put on there are an example of that, um, but the deciduous species that you put on there are not an example of that. Um, so if you can find a way to sneak in some more, um, whether they're in a buffer in the streetscape or not, um, uh, you know, I think that would be really great for your case. So we're recommending to continue it until the May 4th, is that right? May yeah. 4th case? <clears throat> you might want to check in with the applicant, but yeah, that's yeah. the. If you want to come back up, we'll open it back up. Would you mind if we uh, continued it to the, uh, did you say May 4th? Would you all be amenable to continuing it to the May 4th? Yes. And bringing that, uh, giving you some time to bring that additional information. Yes, for okay. sure. And just one quick note that we, because we, we're not going to resubmit our ASR in the interim period, what we'll come back with will be a new landscape plan that will be inconsistent with the kind of current submittal. Okay. So, because we can't resubmit our ASR in time to get back here by May. So we'll bring an updated plan. Yeah. And working with Catherine, we can assure that, that any approval is tied to that plan. Okay. And, that would, and, and that would include a, an interior layout plan? Yes, we can certainly also come back with an interior layout plan as well. Okay. Absolutely. Anything else folks want to mention before we move on? Okay. Casey, how far ahead of time do you need to get material from them? Just trying to figure out how quickly they need to move to get another landscape design done. Um, well, I'll definitely reach out to the applicant after the meeting to to after looking at the calendar. Um, but in order to have everything to be able to put it in the packet, it's at least like two weeks prior. So, yeah. so whenever everybody, yeah. whoever's currently going on May, whatever their deadline would mm -hmm. normally be. Yeah, yeah, it would be the normal May deadline. I don't have them in front of me, but okay. we'll, we'll get together to talk about that. Yeah. We'd like to, just for, we'd like to shoot for May. We, we know that's a quick turnaround, but we think um, given the relatively limited scope of, you know, we think we can probably address that in the next 10 days to two weeks and, and get back here in May. We appreciate it. Okay. Uh, hearing that, this case will be continued to the coming uh, quasi-judicial May 4th. hearing. May 4th, uh, quasi-judicial hearing. Thank you all for your presentation. So that ends the quasi-judicial portion of this meeting. Um, I think we have two sets of minutes, draft minutes to approve. We missed the one on our uh, retreat because uh, we got so excited about talking with Ken. Uh, I've, I've looked at, uh, what is it, it's December 15th. And that was um, that was where the legacy projects presented. 
Um, and they're not very long notes. I thought they looked just fine. Um, and I would motion to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> minutes are approved. Uh, the 12-15 the minutes are approved. Uh, and the other ones were for March 2nd. Yeah, I, I looked, was not here. I looked at those and they look accurate to me, so I'll move to approve those. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, do we have any other business? Does anybody want to bring anything up? Talk about anything? I don't think there's anything else on the agenda. Um, it, for those of you that were not at the retreat, uh, we are looking for volunteers to help with the upcoming Sir Walter Raleigh Awards. Um, we, I don't think, did we get anyone? I can't remember. Um, we didn't, don't really have any uh, strong committee members for the Sir Walter Raleigh Awards and, we, and, it, and it's coming up. So um, if you are able to help, um, please let us know. Um, Is there and anybody? I'm just trying to remember. Bernard volunteered for jury or programming. I can't remember which. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, and then next, what, the next meeting that we're having, we often cancel our second meeting, but this coming meeting is where Nick Musara will present his kind of final legacy project report and. For any of the, any of you who didn't click on that link that I sent out um, in the last um, email, he was his work was brought up on WRAL, and it was a great, uh, really great spotlight on his work. And I just think that um, we should all kind of support him and the Legacy Project as much as we can. Awesome. So that's on the twentieth. Yeah, on the 20th, April 20th. Cool. Um, and that will be in, Casey, is that going to be up in the, on the third floor, same place where he presented last time. So um, if, you, if there's any way you can make it and, and support his work and see, see the work that he did, I think there's some really, really uh, incredible value to what he's presenting. And just want to make sure that the other uh, boards and commissions for the city know about that presentation if they want to come. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes, we'll, we'll be inviting them, similar to how we did last time, staff and other boards and commissions to come and attend. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Be a packed house. Anything else? Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank uh, you. This uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>